dog rising show. Well, the dog rising show. Uh, the dog rising show. I'm dog rice. Oh, I can hear it in my head, can't you? It's so. Oh, the horns, the beauty, the wonder. And you know, the crescendo. And ah, that was a good morning. 8.40 in the morning. Early in the morning. And in you go. In you go. Driving on a highway. Thought you'd escape. Didn't you? You've been all smiles. I can smell it. Well, here I am, back in your faces, ready to wipe those grins clean off. <laughs> All right, 15th of uh, August. Good morning. Doug Rice, uh, that's what I do. This is what I am. Here I am. Rock me. I'm just joking. Uh, this is what I do. You know, I get up uh, and occasionally I talk to Negroes. I talk to my people. I talk to you. You know why? Because I got some shit to say. More importantly, uh, the importance of removing the grin of comfort off of Negro faces has never been more important than today. Maybe yesterday. I don't know. Fact is, you're walking around all gut damn smiles. And I can't let that happen. So what I do is I get on the lives and peruse the black news. But before that, I take a little bit of time, go through some topics that I think are germane, like Jackson. And, uh, you know, I give you every reason to get serious. Be serious. Don't entertain. The masses don't, don't be there. You see, first, uh, they're not paying attention. They're into their own thing these days. And you offer in a distraction of temporary, you know, pleasure and comfort that only sets to stave them off their current course momentarily, and they're back at it. Oh, yes, the progression of Caucasian. So, uh, that's what I do. I get on, uh, I get on the show, and... I show you, this is not a program. I'm deprogramming you. We've been here long enough. Time to look for the exits. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know what's happening in the world. Good Lord, they got their foot up Trump's ass, huh? What is going on? Here's the problem I'm having. They've got some documentation that required a room for you to look at him. I mean, you, you've got to understand that if you have possession of that kind of material in your home, you're going to jail. You're not passing go. You're not clearing any bar of, well, let's see what happened here. They're locking you up as they confiscate the material, but not, not Donald Trump. Oh, no, not Donald Trump. I tell you, he is flying in the face of the caucasity that he loves so much. He is thumbing his nose at the system that he has taken advantage of, and he's going to get away with this shit. I can feel it. These folks are, they're on the rise, and Donald Trump is the tip of their spear. Oh, woe is us if that man gets any near power. All right, so how we do? Doing good? So you know what I do. Uh, it's the uh, 15th. Uh, I got some black news that I've looked up, but I've also got some stuff I want to tell you, a little narration. And what I do is I start with our anchor topic. The topic today, what begins our melee. We're not included. Oh, newsflash, I don't know. If you knew this as Negroes trapped within the confines of this penal colony. But we're not included. Yeah, you, you, you can go sit down, stop asking for shit, stop wondering why you're not apart because you're set apart. We're not included. 
We're not with this mess. We don't run for office. We don't support parties. We don't get into the furtherance of our position in this mired democracy gone mad. No, we're not included. We never were included. You have to understand this. From the inception of this place, it was known a fact put on paper, documented for all to see we're not included. And so when they give you the indication that we in fact are, please remember that we are what I said not. Now working from that premise, you can navigate through the cacophony of caucasity as it rains down on you day to day, trying to simply dodge through the droplets of dumbness, self-pity, self-aggrandizing individuals on the rise toward the religious right that's permeating the country. And let me tell you, they just had one, some organization or nondescript organization, political organization that has now determined it is a religious organization. We're not included. You just let you know they've they've got a plan. They've got they've got something that they want to do. They've got a system they want invoked. They want it placed upon the entire country. And again I say we're not included. And by us being not included, I mean those of us eyes wide open looking direct at the horrors that face us because we're not included. Don't you understand? Don't you understand what they want? What they want doesn't include us. I'm telling you this. Communities are being created that cry this circumstance within the confines of this country. Negroes are not included. And if you expect your inclusion to mean anything, then you must turn your back on anything associated with your identity. And you must take on the identity of those that don't include us. So what have you become? I look, I see. They're telegraphing, they're telling us, they're letting us know the coming future that they envision does not include us. And those of them that say it does can do nothing to stop the tide of those that say we are not included. They can't stop them. So I thought I'd just open your eyes and get that fucking grin off your face by just reminding Negroes once again, who were brought here in chains against their will. That circumstance has never changed. That we are not included. All right, 8.48 in the morning on 15th of August, halfway through this hot-ass month dedicated to a tyrant, a religious nut, that we still suffer through today. Anyway, uh, Civil War 2.0. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think's happening? What do you think's going to happen? Civil War 2.0. Let's talk about it. Folks, look, the shots have not been fired, but I believe, I believe we're, we're in the middle of it. They're set on this course against one another, not including Negroes. Civil War 2.0 will not be civil. Now, understand what they've done. They searched a man's home. They found something at the home that shouldn't have found. Documents. Secret documents. Here's what happened. One guy decides he's going to go to Cincinnati, check out the FBI building, throw them a little few shots, then get killed. Boom. Former submariner with secret security clearances, mad that they searched the home of Donald Trump. Well, what a thing to give your rather experienced life to. Interesting. But it doesn't stop there just yesterday here in Phoenix. A couple of them showed up downtown, mad. The FBI went and searched this 
man's home. I'm trying to figure out where does it end? What do you think's going to happen when they try to arrest this monster? Motherfuckers are in their feelings. Civil War 2.0. I don't know that that describes clearly the direction they seem headed toward. I don't know. I think more just a massacre. This is a rape culture. It's one thing I've found out. And these folks want to act on their proclivities so bad, I believe they'd find any excuse to take the safety off their own civilians. And I say this having watched the progressiveness of this disease, something I blame the sun on, quite frankly. Two things you might want to check out as we talk about the Civil War 2.0. One involves Woodstock 69. It's on Prime. It's nice. You know, Prime, Amazon Prime Video. It's very good. Very good. Kind of showed that generation of individuals born to the generation that fought the Second World War, who got together almost half a million, and generally nothing happened. It expressed that generation and their behavior if they determined to do a thing. Pretty interesting. But then juxtaposed to that, ladies and gentlemen, on Netflix, there's something called Trainwreck 99, which gives you a different view as to the second attempt at Woodstock and its disastrous end. But more than that, it gives insight into the minds of the males that are walking about this country and the slow progression from 69 to what they became in 99 to what the fuck they are today. Again, I believe it's the sun that anyone with half a brain can see things are getting worse and worse in a specific segment of the global population. There are very specific individuals in their feelings regarding skin tone, of all things. And I don't quite understand it, but the only thing that seems predicated on that concern might have something to do with the sun that went from yellow to white in a period of about 30 to 40 years. Try to connect the dots, folks. Why are motherfuckers losing their goddamned minds? Why are we so close to Civil War 2.0? I don't know. But, I digress. 8.52 in the morning, 15th of August. I talk about shit. Please, uh, tap the screen. Share the live. Comment. I can't read shit I can't see. Please uh, thank Detrina, who is uh, monitoring and managing the live. If you're in your feelings, just see her. If what I say insults your delicate sensibilities, just talk to Detrina. She's right there to soothe you right out the fucking room. <sighs> Trump! Boy, he's something. That's a slippery eel. Trump calculates. He's a calculator. He's a human calculator. Not very intelligent. But intelligence obviously is not a requirement for the highest office in this god-awful land. But Trump has an interesting future ahead of him should things play out in a specific way. Let me tell you what I learned. Trump could be president from prison. Yes, yes, I've heard more than one person say it, Trump. Let me tell you how this happens. They continue to put him through the ringer. They convict him. They throw him in jail. They have the vote. He wins the vote. He can still serve as president, nothing stopping him. He'll still serve the term. And to me, that's the best of both worlds. You've got him now trapped. He can't pardon himself, so he's got to do the time. And he's got to be president. I think it's a perfect scenario. Everybody wins. Yes, consider it, look it up, it's true. 
I only hope it happens because that's just funny as fucking hell. I'm just saying, man, hilarious. It's, can you imagine a fucking press conferences? You fucking have one every day just to talk to people. It's funny. It's funny. I, I, I wrote it. At the 854, we're creeping up 9 o'clock's ass. If you're about to walk into work, shut up. Just go to your office and finish watching this live. You need this medicine before you face the fucking crowds. They'll, they'll wait. We got next. Yeah, baby. We got next. I want to bring this up because it's important. You, you understand why they're losing their minds. Okay? They are losing their minds based on the feeling that's emanating from creation that lets them know we got next. Now, they don't know it overtly like someone wrote it on the wall and pointed and said, hey, I've done that. But we got next. Now, look, that means, folks, everybody's had a little turn and we had to take a time out, you know, uh, sacrificing our kids to ball and all, you know, all that foreign booty that we felt our duty to please. 400 years. That's the term of enslavement near over, if not over, Soon, deliverance. And we got next. Now, let me not get ahead of myself. There is a responsibility in being Negro. As a set-apart individual, it will be our job to usher in true worship of the Most High globally. How it happens, I don't have the details. Nobody does. New books will be open. But, we got next. Now, I know that hurts some folks' feelings. Uh, you're going to have to get over that, and rather smartly. If you don't mind, we got the job to do. Now, I know it burns the hides and chaps of caucasity to hear they're going to have to take a back seat to negrosity. But you get used to it, I swear. We got next. Oh, you just I love that. Joke. That was good. That was Detrina's idea if you didn't like it. But if you loved it, all me. Hey, the construct. That's what I'm against. I got people telling me that I'm a racist. I'm an anti-racist. They got something, you know, they, they made movies about it. They made one too many, The Matrix. Right? Well... I think there's another movie that could be made. We can call it The Construct. And what we'll talk about is race. That construct which holds so many at bay. I mean, almost at gunpoint. You'd, you'd, you'd wonder that this rich heritage that you hold so much in a family that goes back centuries, you trade it all to be white. Sir, it's a construct. It's designed to accomplish a thing that it accomplished, and that accomplishment is over. Every man will return to his own land, and the construct will be deconstructed. Oh, it's going to be hell to pay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, y'all went too far with the whole construct. You took that shit global. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you can't have that. So, prepare for the deconstructing of the construct which places one group of individuals above everyone else and surprisingly another group on the bottom every time. Mm, mm, mm. Hmm. All right. So, uh, we're also going to talk a little bit. I got a little, a little, I got a little bit of thing. I'm going to get off my chest. Okay. We're going to talk about black people versus Negroes versus Hebrew. Now those three transitory states of being, for those who are kin to the transatlantic slave trade, that transition needs to take place, and I mean quick. Some of you I talk to need to go from black people to Negroes to Hebrews, and I mean fast. I'm making the transition. I'm 
I'm making the try, I'm investigating the furtherance of commitment to the Most High God. I am considering all the things needed to bring myself into alignment. It may change my life, I don't know. But there are three states of beings in this country for us. We got black people. They're everywhere. Black people are everywhere. You can see them everywhere. They're doing their videos. They're making their money. They're entertaining, called Cassidy. Oh, making them laugh and sing and dance. And it's just... Yeah. Then we got Negroes. Oh, I love my Negroes. Half in, half out, some half crazy. But brothers and sisters, one and all. Finally, we got Hebrews, those few individuals walking about, eyes wide open, ready to lead, educate, to follow, ready at every turn to avoid caucasity. Those three individuals have to transit from there to there. And I mean fast, it's getting bad out here. Do you know, a lot of black people are gonna get left behind. You know, then the Negroes, well, they're gonna barely make it. Hebrews will be just fine. Take that to the bank. All right, and the reason why we are so vilified in this place is that, let me tell you something what they do. They love our essence. They love it. but they hate our presence. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? They love the essence of Negro. That thing that sets them apart in the eyes of the most high God of all creation. That thing they can't resist but be attracted to and towards. That swag we walk about with infecting the entire globe everywhere. They know Jay-Z, baby. Right? And though they love to imitate, well, procreate, obfuscate, all the things they love to do when it comes to us, one thing they can really pinpoint is they love the essence that we bring about, but the presence is what they cannot buy. As long as they have that attitude, we need to be conscious of our surroundings. Because they may love your essence. I mean, you bring the warm glow, baby. But they can't stand your presence. All right, that's it. Wake the fuck up. 9.02 in the morning. That's, uh, that's the narrative. That's the up and down. That's the Doug Rice show. So I do it, you know. I hope you enjoyed it. Please tap the screen, share the live, make comments. I won't see them, but Trina will. <laughs> And uh, the second part of what we do here is best described is peruse the black news with Hebrews. Only because, you know, again, I say it almost every time. I encourage you to walk about this place without a smile. You don't have to scowl. Don't rough mug anybody. I'm not saying do that. I'm just saying, look like you are serious-minded, like you know that you're going from point A to point B, and you're not tolerant of being molested, stopped, questioned in any sense of the word, and as you glide through the crowd of caucasity, you hope the give a fuck is written all over your face. Some of us slip. Some of us are so warm, so welcome, so inviting. We can't help but crack a smile in the face of those that don't like you. And do you know what they'll do? They'll smile back. Isn't that nice? So, what I do, I bring the receipts, baby. I got the black news. I tell you what's going on. As much as it can help me do so when I search term black news. So here we go. What do we got first? I don't know. Search term black news and the return. What I got? Uh, black Lives Matter calls conservative cry of defund the FBI hypocritical. It does sound a little stupid, doesn't it? 
You want to defund the FBI? Where are you going to get the stats that put us doing everything to you? Who's going to who's going to provide who's going to spoon feed you the bullshit? If if you defund the FBI, they're going to stop going after us by default if they stop going after you. So you might want to slow down on that. I don't think in other words it'll benefit us. Oh, there they go. You get it? Okay. You got it. Okay, good. Alright, uh, what is this? We are a broken people. The importance of black home ownership and why the wealth gap is widening. And this by, uh, this is an opinion, okay, by Swapna Venegopal Ramasi, who says black home ownership, that wealth gap, he declares that we are a broken people. This guy named Swapna Venu... You... Who is he talking for? This is what I'm saying. They're always telling our story. Don't tell our story. Don't print this shit. Why would you print this shit? The importance of black home ownership and why the wealth gap is widening coming from Swapna Venyagolpa ain't fucking something I'm ever going to be interested in hearing. I mean that shit. You tell Swapna to tell his cousin to stop following me around a goddamn stone when I'm trying to buy some hair grease. You hear me? First. Then he can concern himself with my home ownership. I just want some... You know, some, some hair grease without being eyed. Swap now, mother. Sorry. It just came out. I drift. I don't know. Fuck. You know it's true. You <laughs> fucking look at a nigga on the store. I ain't never. Look, that's a security system all by itself. Boy, I ain't never been looked at so good. When I go into a store. Whoa, baby. Boy, they like they like Jedi Knights. Fucking teleport from one side of the store. They want you at the front. Black entertainment mogul calls for more inclusion in news and media. Why? Why? Why do you want to be more? Why do, we, why do you want to deep, deep dive into this shit? Ain't this shit falling off the rails? Don't you motherfuckers know? We still begging. You want to be in the NFL. You want to be in the entertainment. You want to be everywhere the ship is wrecking. Is that what you want? The best seat for your destruction? Pack your shit. We're leaving. Those of us that want to leave. I just get tired of hearing this begging for this. Dude, stop. Stop asking for shit they're denying you. They don't want you to have it. So we look like a bunch of idiots when we put on the front news brought to us by, again, Ramisha Maruf, who seems to write that black entertainment mogul calls from... What, why is Ramisha Maruf even in the conversation? Can, can somebody go get Jamal or Reggie or something? Reggie will talk about this. Reggie from North Carolina. I mean, if you want to talk about our fucking business, do me a favor. You're going to print it. Can we write it? I don't want Ramesh writing about Negroes. Is that too much to ask? How's everybody telling our story? This is not going well because they are erasing critical race theory and at the same time telling our story in print as they fucking want to. Yes, weave a tale of falsehood and bullshit about us. What, what do they do? They read it. And they fucking believe them. Okay, well, I'm going to call that out every time I see it. For God's sake, that pisses me off. All right, so there was a man accused of driving into a crowd before killing his mother, and he told police he was tired of fighting with her. Now, I don't know how that came up in my black news, but I just thought that was interesting. Guy said uh, before he drove into a crowd of people, stable killed his mom, and, you know, just to give him a little inf insight as to what was going on, he just didn't want to fight with his mother anymore. You know. But everything's good. The sun is not baking anybody's goddamn brains. Of course not. 
with this crazy notion that the sun, which used to be a beautiful yellow, I used to paint the sun. Do you remember when we used to wear the yellow crowns? Huh? We get mad at each other in kindergarten about them yellow crowns, right? What color's the sun now? What color is the sun? Seems to me the sun is getting a bit of a lighter hue. Uh, that seems to be affecting the minds of like individuals. I'm just saying, what the fuck? You no, know, no, I'm crazy? Okay. Continuing, baby. Hey, continuing. Hey, couple accused of hosting a racist Juneteenth spoof party respond. You mean you held this party that spoofed black people and Juneteenth and you actually going to say something? <laughs> Don't say nothing. Just look, when y'all do some stupid shit like that, when you do the overt racist thing that you can possibly do and you get caught doing it, best to go sit what they call the fuck down for a little while and then shut what they call the fuck up for a little while. Nobody wants to hear your mouth. See, the same lady that was caught with the tirades, the judge, and immediately came out and talked about the stress that she was under, had she only shut her mouth. They're having parties at our expense. They're having parties to make fun of Negroes. You think there's nothing special about us? You don't think there's nothing a little unique about us? I mean, it's not picnics, thank God. But they're having themed parties about something they think Negroes hold dear. You don't think there's a problem with these folks? I mean, we catch them caricaturing us all over the place. Blackface, the wigs. We, do we do that? I don't know. I'm sorry, what are you gonna tell me? We were dressing a suit and tie? Oh, that's cold. <sighs> Moving on. Donald Trump is above the law. Deal with it, America. Admit it. And here's how we prove it. And that's by E.J. Montini in the Arizona Republic. Somebody said it. Donald Trump is above the law. I have guessed this thing. Donald Trump is the king of the United States. Yes! Yes! They have crowned this man king nobody knew. Why do I say that? First, nobody's touching him. He's breaking the law like the law don't break, baby. He is law-breaking in their face and fuck them. You got to admit the balls are big on DT, right? But here's what they're trying to do. They're trying to take him out, man. You know, and you got to be careful if you decide to take out the king. So they are really not going to do shit to this man before it's too late. That's the reason I say it's over. They're not going to touch him for fear of what he might do so that he eventually does exactly what they fear. I ain't never seen this checkmate psychology used before. But you got to admit, it's pretty effective. Nick Rose, stay out of the fray. Stay out of the way. It's not your fight. And they're already asking you to contribute. Sit your asses down and be quiet. Don't move. Oh, no, don't get up. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, I'm going to take every single crumb on the table in front of me, and I'm snatching it quick. But I'm not lifting a fucking finger to help you cowards. Avoid what you put in place. For your own demise. No. Negroes, sit down. Donald Trump is king. Long live the king, huh? Let's continue, baby. Uh, let's continue. Okay, I got a guy. I don't understand this guy. You should see his face. Uh, he's a Michigan man. He's accused of hosting a white supremacist camp on his property, and he was sentenced to probation. So what he's done is he's molded the minds of his uh, compatriots, constituents, friends, and family's children 
And he got caught doing it, teaching him to do all kinds of horrible things. And no jail time, just probation. Hey, don't do it again. He's doing it right fucking now. He lit about 8,000 fires. Shit can't take back. He got probation. What do you think he's doing right now? He's teaching somebody right now how to put the eyes on a sheet just right. I'm sure it's going to be it's educational. He gives a little plaque, certificate, signature, stamp, charges 195 bucks. I know it's a goddamn game. Just kidding. That's it, baby. All right. Uh, hmm. How the Illuminati has stolen hip-hop forever. Sorry. Hey, Illuminati, you didn't have to steal it. You can have that motherfucker. Take it. If you leave some shit behind, give me an address where I can fucking send it to you, partner. You wanted it? You got it, motherfucker. And every goddamn person that comes with it. Take it! I never wanted it in the first place. It's representative of black people in this country lost to the cause of caucasity. So please... Take that shit. I had no idea you wanted it. You wanted hip-hop? There! Oh, Illuminati. Just fucking write it down, baby. You can have that shit. It's yours. All right. I think I'm done. You think I'm done? I think I'm done. Yeah. It's uh, 9.15. You know. I think we had a good show. You're late. You sit there. Now, I know you're feeling giddy. You watched me for a little while. It happens. But now you've got to get your ass up and go to work. And again, you're late. I don't know what you're doing, but <clears throat> even being late, 16 minutes, you get out of that car before you steal yourself. And I'm going to have a problem. Remember all that we talked about. I want you to play it in your brain just a little bit. And when they look at you and they even may say, you're 15 minutes late, you still hold your muster. And as you reach for the door of your office and glide in to recover from this fabulous show, before you step outside that office, you be sure. Check the mirror, it's right there. Get that goddamned grin off your face. Okay, go to work because you're, you're late.